OK, bringing in now award-winning journalist Martin Jay. Martin, good to see you again. Um, this is just one of a string of attacks that ISIL's conducted in Afghanistan. Is this any indication that they're growing in strength in the country? Well, it seems that that is the case, isn't it? I mean, if you look at it from a distance, it, it looks as though um, ISIS is starting to branch out into Afghanistan. We don't know the statistics yet, but um, from the ground, incidents like this uh, seem to be indicative that um, there is some sort of growth. And, you know, you could almost argue that this was inevitable. Um, Afghanistan is a huge country. Um, it's largely ungoverned. It has a real problem with corruption, and it has a, a NATO-led coalition there of only something like 13,000 soldiers, which is nothing, really. So um, when you look at the, the losses that they've incurred in Syria and Iraq, I think it was inevitable that um, Afghanistan would prove to be new fertile ground for them. And, and is this because there's a direct interest for ISIL in Afghanistan or because they're being slowly kicked out of Syria and Iraq? I think the latter. I think I think they're having a hard time, and they've they've gone um, for the rat lines. And many of us guessed wrongly that it would be Yemen and Libya, but they've, in fact they've gone for Afghanistan because I think, as I said earlier, it's it's quite an easy, ungoverned, large country with very poor security, and in particular, um, a real corruption problem, which leads um, insurgent groups to carry out attacks like this relatively easily. Mm. You mentioned the NATO troop presence um, a little earlier. Of course, Jens Stoltenberg was trying to rally Britain and Germany to send in more troops. It was largely laughed out of the office. Um, but do you see them rallying and sending more troops? Or even do you think one time NATO hater President Trump might start sending more people in? <laughs> I, think, I think Trump um, has, is going to do a U-turn again. Uh, if we look back at what he said about Afghanistan uh, in the months leading up to taking office. He berated Obama. He said, we need to get out of wars in the Middle East, which are costing us $6 trillion. Um, we can't win in Afghanistan. And now, what are we seeing this week? We've seen exactly the opposite. We've seen uh, messages filtering through via his people, via James Mattis, that there is a new idea um, with his generals in NATO that we should, they should actually be sending more troops there. They're talking about. I mean, the paper is, on paper, it's something like about 5,000 extra troops from America and something like 10,000 from a constellation of various other countries that make up ISIF. So um, if that were to happen, that would be, um, uh, that would be a serious um, um, game changer, something to, to look out for. But um, you talk about Britain and Germany, that's a very different story because that's a different political um, uh, dynamic there which uh, might take longer. Yeah. Uh, what about the internal power play in Afghanistan? Because the Taliban were quick to uh, say it wasn't responsible for this attack on the TV station. Why do you think that was? It's, it's hugely important for the Taliban um, uh, and, for, and for ISIL to get their messages right and accurate for um, media around the world, who in this era of uh, sloppy journalism and fake news, it would be quite easy for those two groups' activities to merge into one story. Neither group wants that. And the main reason why that is is because both of these groups are so ideologically opposed to one another. They're basically chalk and cheese. Um, the Taliban is largely a nationalist organization um, Islamic with the Islamic roots, mm. which has a focus on retaking power in, in Afghanistan, and which has sympathies and links um, ideologically to um, the Shia Arab world, uh, Iran in particular, whereas ISIL is a, a Sunni extremist organization which has sympathies with the Gulf Arab states, so they're completely opposite to one another. Mm. Okay, always appreciate getting your thoughts on what's happening in that part of the world. For now, though, Martin J in Beirut, thanks very much.